Hey everybody, and welcome to a book haul. Um, these are all the books I'm gonna haul. Haven't read any of them, as per the customs of a book haul. But I accumulated all of these recently, and I wanted to show them to you. I thought it'd be fun to make a video, and I'm currently in the last three weeks of my master's. So I really cannot make something complicated. <laughs> so I just thought sitting down to make a haul would be fun. Um, I'm excited about all of these books. I got them between two trips that I did, New York and London. I'm drinking a smoothie because it's breakfast time. And if you're wondering why I'm being a demon and using a plastic straw, it's because my family were just trying to finish off the straws that we have before either not ever buying straws again or transitioning to paper straws. I, it also occurred to me when I decided to say that, that no one would have noticed, but I would have noticed if it was someone else. So we're literally just going to jump. Actually, you know what? Before we jump in, let's talk about the concept of a book haul because I struggle with it. Um, I have heard a lot of people, rightly so, interestingly so, talk about how book hauls are maybe not pushing the kind of dream vision we have for booktube and that it's a very consumerist capitalist approach to booktube it's one of the things that makes booktube actually not idealistic um as this like utopia for book lovers to gather and discuss literature um because it has nothing to do <laughs> with literature right it has nothing to do with you haven't read the books you're literally just showing books off um, and I've heard some people kind of relate it to kind of, sh kind of flexing your muscles, kind of like, look at all of the books that I have. And as a person who has been in booktube for over seven years, I find that a very interesting perspective. Um, I don't disagree with that perspective. Um, but I also don't fully agree with that perspective because I think... I saw the first book hauls, like the first book hauls that ever happened. I watched them and I participated in them. And I know for certain that that's not what they were about. They were genuinely just a new form of content that allowed you to share your immediate excitement for a book, um, to also to like engage with your viewers to find out if anyone else had read the book and could re like actually recommends it to you, had any opinions on it. Um, but also, and this is important, and I don't think I ever realized it previously, but I realize it now, book hauls are an important form for content because they don't require you to have read anything yet. And that sounds like you're cheating or you're not doing the work, but actually, if you're gonna run a YouTube channel based around books, you need a lot of videos, and if every video requires that you read a book you might like you might have a month where you don't read or you might have a few weeks where you're reading a really um book a book that's taking you a really long time so you need a video that's just gonna let you film a video and put it out there and a book haul facilitates that in a fun way so anyway i don't know what i'm talking about let's get into the book haul i'm gonna start with the books that i got at book expo um and book con um, these are all from a New York book convention. It's the largest convention in North America for publishing trade things. And there was one ARC I was the most excited to get. If you don't know what an ARC is, by the way, it's an advanced reader's copy. So these are all books that haven't been published yet, but are coming out in the next year. The book I was most excited to get was this one. Oh, baby. And I got it. It's <laughs> it's a very large expanse of sea by Tahira Mafi. The interesting thing is that this did not have a cover until like a week ago, and now it does have a cover. So this blue is irrelevant because the actual cover is white. But um, I'm super excited about this book. It's interesting because I've not read anything by Tahira Mafi. She's been big in BookTube for years. People love the Shatter Me series i was never interested in that whatsoever just just you know the plot synopsis didn't intrigue me um but this is not supernatural this is a contemporary book 
um, that takes place a year after 9-11 with a Muslim character. So it sounds fantastic. She, it says right here that she wears a hijab every day, so she's very visually, um, for, for people right after 9-11, it's a visual sign of fear. Um, but also she's breakdancing in New York City. It just sounds fantastic. I haven't read it. That I'm not, I'm not going to even pretend that I have something deep to say about these books. I don't. I haven't read them. That's the point of a haul. Um, Imposters by Scott Westerfeld. So this happened by accident. I was sitting waiting for the next book, actually, when um, I saw that Emma from Emma Books was re uh, had a copy of this. And I was like, wait, Scott Westerfeld has a new book? What? A what? I had not heard of this at all. And then... <laughs> This is so dumb. The marketing is, has been low on this because I was like, okay, how have I not heard about this? And then I was like, can I look at your copy? And everyone was like, yeah, sure. So I start reading the back of it. It is not only a new book by Scott Westerfeld. It is a book set in one of my favorite series worlds, the Ugly series. This book takes place in this world. Everyone loves this series. <laughs> so I don't understand why they wouldn't be like hardcore publishing this. I mean, marketing this. So anyway, I was very excited when I heard about that. So I ran to get it and I grabbed myself a copy. This next book, Wild Card by Marie Lu, I got for my boyfriend actually, because he's very interested in this series, um, this duology. And what's really cool is I pulled this out um, I have the arc of the first book and now the arc of the second book. So it's like a matching series. <laughs> like it looks real good, which I think is great. This next book, Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I got this when I went to an event called Novel um, for, for Little Brown's kind of young adult publishing section, sector. Um, this is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer. And I was really excited about Strange the Dreamer, like really mega hyped when it came out a year or two ago. And then I started to read it and I just couldn't get in it. I just, I struggle with fantasy, I'll admit that, but I just couldn't like get it. I just couldn't access it. So I was like, you know what? This is not the book to read right now. I'll read it another time. So I definitely meant to get back to it. However, I have apparently given away my arc of the first book. So I don't own the first book. And I was, so they gave me the second book and I was very excited and I was like, oh, this is very cool. I guess I'll just have to go out and buy the first book because I've lost it. Au contraire, my pals at Novelty they uh they help me out so this is the part of the video where i do an unboxing i don't think i've ever done an unbox uh, maybe once a long time ago in like 2014 i did an unboxing on my channel we're back i'm <laughs> how old am I? how old was i in 2014 i think i was 18. um in this box they have given me but da 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 the new paperback edition of strange the dreamer in a cover that I far prefer. So this is very good. This is very exciting. I now have both books if I want to undertake that journey. Um, they also gave me How She Died, How I Lived, a contemporary novel. Um, this one sounds very fun. An Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason. Um, it's set in like, Oh God, it's set in London and they're, the, the characters are trying to kill Queen Elizabeth. So it sounds fun. Sounds like a good time. And then finally they sent me this book, Light Years by Cass Morgan, um, which is a, like, a, like a science fiction novel. They also sent me a water bottle, which I have over there and I can't access. I, I would get up to get it, but I currently have a lapel microphone on with a cord, so I'm I'm stuck in this chair. And they sent me this little <clears throat> pin that says, stay bookish. So that was very fun. Um, it was a very good idea. Ooh, should I close this? It's gonna make such a horrible sound. I hate the sound of cardboard on cardboard. Oh yeah, no, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. I'm gonna put it down 
I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna have a drink of this smoothie because I'm extremely hungry. And we're gonna move on. No wait, I was gonna say at that event they were giving us a lot of books and it was they were obviously very smart and they were very aware that all of the people at that event were going to be taking home loads of books and they were like instead of you having to carry them home we're gonna send them to you and it was like thank you so that was very nice of them the next book i have is the love and lies of Ruxana ali by sabina khan this is exciting because my friend oh, jeffrey is um the editor on this book and so this is a book he's very excited about and therefore i'm very excited about it what else did i get this one i got these actually these next two i got because of kaylee hyde <laughs> she told me to get them um i hung out with kaylee quite a lot throughout book expo and there was really only there's only two books i wanted at book expo and it was the tahara mafi book which i got and um a hank Gre the new hank green book and they weren't giving out the Hank Green book. So I was very much just like along for the ride, enjoying it. I was doing work there. I was filming an interview for my documentary. So I was doing like work and having a good time. I was on a few panels and stuff, but I was just like really trying to not grab books that I wasn't planning on reading. Um, but I was with Kaylee and she wanted these two books and I was like, yeah, sure. So A Heart in a Body in the World is about a girl who runs a very long distance to kind of process a trauma and I think this sounds really great and Odd One Out by Nick Stone um I don't remember what this one's about but it's it was supposed to be very good and um the author signed this one actually quite a few of these are signed should I have been showing you that I'm not sure but this one's funny you're not gonna be able to see it from that far away but she drew my glasses because she liked my glasses which was very cute all right what else did I get at book expo I got this because of Monica. Um, she went to get the new, this is Snot Girl by Brian Lee O'Malley, which is, I hate the name of it. <laughs> I hate the name of it, but I love Brian Lee O'Malley. He's the one who did Scott Pilgrim versus the world and seconds. Um, she went to get the second volume, I think, and they gave her the first volume and she didn't need it. So yep, got that, which is very exciting because I, I was gonna buy that. Um, and I got Aquacorn Cove by Katie O'Neill, which is also just a little um, graphic novel. And the illustrations are beautiful. So I'm like very excited to read that. Um, and that's it. Oh my God, I did it. <laughs> that's everything I got at BookCon. Um, the pile's a lot larger than I thought it was going to be because you just get handed a lot of stuff and you feel guilty not taking it. But here I am. Um, and then I bought a bunch of books, which controversial move to buy books while you're on a trip where they're giving you a bunch of books. Literally people kept saying to me, stop buying books, Ariel. And I was like, but these are books I really, really want. <laughs> um, I got this book that I've already read and was hilarious. It's called, We Go to the Gallery. Um, it's just, I bought it at the Whitney Museum which is an art museum and it's just a very funny book about contemporary art i loved it um what do i want to do here this because i can't just make this pile go <laughs> until it surpasses me um i bought the glass castle by jeanette walls i bought this because my friend indy told me to buy it she couldn't stop raving about it she said like that it is one of the best books she's ever read and really recommended it so i trusted her and I bought it. I also bought lunch poems because of Indy, Frank O'Hara. Um, this is like a collection I've heard about before, but she really loved it. So I thought, you know what? I'll finally bite the bullet. I'll grab that. I got this, which I'm so hyped about. William Carlos Williams, The Red Wheelbarrow and Other Poems. So it's just a little collection of poetry by William Carlos Williams, obviously. Um, but I think it's a beautiful little collection of his. Then I bought, oh, all of these, apart from obviously the one that was at the museum, all of these have been from The Strand. Bought this one at the house, bought this one at, nope, bought this one, which is named The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. This is also a book that I've been recommended so many times. It's super short um, and it's about, you know what? 
I'm not sure. I know that it's about a young Latina girl, and that got me excited. So I, I picked it up, and I've just heard that people love it. And then finally in New York, this was at, a, the, at the bookshop across from Scholastic. My friends Jeffrey and Jeremy, who I was staying with in New York, work at Scholastic. So I visited Scholastic a lot, and there was a bookshop right across from it, um, and I saw this for $10. I wonder how much it retails for. It retails for $42. Um, it was a used bookshop. Um, Frida's Fiestas, <laughs> Recipes and Reminiscences of Life, Reminiscence of Life, hmm, uh, with Frida Kahlo. This is a cookbook inspired by Frida Kahlo. Um, I think like legit meals that she'd eaten or that she would cook on occasion. But it also has essays about Frida and Frida and food. And it just looked beautiful and it has photos of Frida in here. So you know what? I thought it was a very cool book to add to the collection. And it has this beautiful yellow cover. So that is very nice. All right, let me put this under here. I'm not editing this video, by the way. That's why it's gonna be super long. Um, let's move on to New York, shall we? I mean, we just did New York. Let's move on to London. Is this recording? Yeah, it's still recording. Um, it's kind of far away. What should I do? <laughs> okay, all right. It's all going okay so far. It's all going okay. All right, so this book it's called The Beautiful Summer by Cesare Pavese. Um, this was recommended to me at Hatchard's Bookshop in London. As a, It was kind of a bad moment to recommend me a book. It was the people, I just, the camera is so far away that I can't really tell if it's, it's recording for sure. Okay, great. Um, it was a bad moment to recommend me this book because I was at the till, I paid the money, I got my receipt, they handed me the book that I just bought which is over there and as I like kind of stepped away the guy was like have you read this pointing to this and I'm like no and he's like oh it's so good you should get it and I'm like I already paid <laughs> like I'm already done my transaction here I was like okay and so I kind of stepped aside so that the next person in line could pay and I picked this up and I started flipping through it and it genuinely did sound really good, but I didn't want to like step back in line to pay for another book. That just seemed dumb. So a couple days later, I was in my favorite bookshop, Foils, and they had a little table display with this book on it. I picked it up, I read the first page, which is like what I always do to make sure that I'm gonna jive with the writing style. Um, and I loved it. And it's so short, it's not, I don't even think it's 100 pages. It's, it's exactly 101 pages. Um, so I thought, yep, I'm gonna give that a shot. So I'm very excited about that. And it's also just so beautiful. Then I have She Must Be Mad by Charlie Cox. Very excitingly, Charlie is a friend of mine and this is her debut poetry collection. This is going to be highlighted in my documentary about poets that post their poetry on Instagram so that was important then I got this book trees by <laughs> by it's not by anyone because it's uh, like a little textbooky it's adorable it's a ladybird book um oh no it does on the inside it says by Brian Vesey Fitzgerald with illustrations by S.R. Badman this is literally just a book about trees that I, I got when I went to Kew Gardens which is this massive um, garden park thing in London. It was beautiful and I really enjoyed my time there and I got this as kind of a little takeaway from the trip. I love this book. I've already, I read a page, we were sitting um, near this giant tree when I bought the book. So I bought the book, we sat down and I was like, I wonder if I can identify this book or this tree. So I identified the tree in the book and I genuinely learned a lot. So that was very nice. All right, let's do this one next. This is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. You probably have heard of this. This has gotten a considerable amount of buzz and hype and positive reviews. I've wanted to read it for ages. Um, and I just, does anyone else do this? Where I was like, you know what? It's not the time yet. I don't, and I don't even know what that means. I was like, you know what? It's just not the time to buy this yet. I've also like seen so many different covers for it. Covers I like, covers I don't like. 
and I was like, I don't know which cover version I want yet. I don't know if I want it in paperback or hardback. I don't, <laughs> these things might not matter, but like to me they matter. And I was just like, you know what? I really want to just wait for it. I'm not ready to read this yet. I'm not ready to read this yet. And then my boyfriend and I went to a bookshop one day and I saw it and I had not seen this cover. Oh, my dogs are barking. I had not seen this cover yet. And I was like, gosh, this one's beautiful. And it's now in paperback. It's like a lot smaller than the giant hard covers I've seen of it. Um, and I was like, this, this is beautiful. And then I read the first page and I was like, I've got to finally buy it. So this is about a, um, Japanese, no, it's not. It's about a Korean girl who moves to Japan. And if you don't know, and I barely know anything, I feel kind of ignorant speaking about it, but if you don't know, there was a, there's a lot, there is, and there was a lot of tension between Korea and Japan. And so this book kind of deals with that. Um, and it's supposed to be like a family saga over the generation. So it sounds fantastic. I'm very excited about that. These two books I got at Gaze the Word. I'm going to speed through the rest of this pile, this pile, because I've done a book haul on my Instagram um, IGTV. So a lot of you have probably seen these, but I got these at Gaze the Word, which is a LGBT bookshop near King's Cross Station. Um, the authors don't need to be LGBT, although oftentimes they are, um, but the content of the book has to be to be in that bookshop and the bookshop's been around since 1979 so it's like a it's, it's a legit um I don't know it's really cool I think it's got it's got a lot of very interesting and important history so anyway I got Cool For You by Eileen Miles someone I've heard a lot about but haven't I haven't actually met anyone who's read anything by Eileen Miles so I'm very excited to try them out for myself and see if I like them. And then I got La Bastarda by Trifonia Melabia Obono, something I've never heard about. I've never, I know nothing about this book. I just thought that it sounded interesting. It's about a girl who seems to be like raised in a kind of a commune um, and she's lesbian and she fears like kind of tell what will happen when she tells her community about it. Then I got... The Word for Woman is Wilderness by Abby Andrews. This is a book about a girl who gets kind of frustrated because she feels like all of the people that go on adventures, like nature hiking adventures, are men. And she's frustrated because she's like, why don't women ever get to just go into the woods without us thinking they're crazy? So she decides to do that herself and she takes a giant hike through the Arctic Circle um, and it's just about the things that she sees and more importantly the things that she contemplates while on that hike and I think that that sounds incredible. Um, then I got Ruby Tando's Eat Up which is a book about, it's a non-fiction book about food obviously. Um, Ruby Tando, if you watch The Great British Bake Off, <laughs> is um, one of the contestants on The Great British Bake Off, a show that I adore. Um, and I'm very upset that it's moved to Channel 4 and I refuse to watch it on Channel 4. But anyway, um, while it existed, it was beautiful. And I loved Ruby on the show. And she's now written this book about our, our relationships with food and how our relationship with food has really changed and gotten quite difficult. So um, this, is, this is a look at that relationship and how we should think about food and how we do think about food, etc. I think it sounds great. Um, I'm currently trying to become a much healthier human and be a lot more aware of how I eat, but also not let that become a negative thing. So yeah. Um, Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. I'm very excited about this. It's an essay collection um, by, just about all sorts of things. Like the, the words that are scratched out are parties, dates, friends, jobs, life. It's just a bunch of essays about her life basically. My voice squeaked because I've been talking for so long. All right, and those are all the books that I got in London. So now this book, the camera's blinking. It could shut off at any moment or it could keep trucking on. Is it going to shut off? It's blinking a lot. It's just, it's blinking a lot <laughs> and, and it's going to keep filming. It's continuing to film. Fantastic. Okay. This book I bought 
in between my trip to New York and London. Like I had, I literally, I flew to New York. I was there for 10 days. I flew back home. I was home for three days and then I flew to London. In those three days, my brother and I went to Toronto to see Jack White, which was very fun. While we were in Toronto, we went to Chapters. No, we didn't. Yes, well, I mean, we did. <laughs> we went to Chapters and to Type Books. I got this one at Chapters though. And um, yeah, and I ended up picking up this book while I was there. So this is The Feminine Mystique by Betty Frieden. Frieden? Frieden, I feel. I truly feel that. Um, is how it's going to be pronounced. Uh, first of all, I love this edition of it. It's very um, bold, classic, you know, um, straightforward, simple. This is one of the staples on feminist literature and I have not read it. Um, and when I saw it, or actually I looked it up because it was mentioned in, I really want to say it was Grace and Frankie, which is one of my favorite shows. If you haven't seen Grace and Frankie, please check it out. It's on Netflix. It will make your life way better. It's so beautiful and happy and funny and, and thought provoking. It's so good. <laughs> anyway, is this still recording? God, I have so many things on the go. Yeah, this is still recording. Great. So this being the microphone. Um, this is, like I said, one of the staples in feminist literature. I haven't read it. I really wanted to. I So I found it in the bookshop and I read the first uh, few pages and I was spellbound. I was in it to win. I was like, this sounds absolutely fantastic. I need to read this. So very much like I'm going to read this understanding it was written in, ooh, <laughs> I was gonna say the 60s yeah 63 is when it was first published um so the dog just barked at me. oh god maybe there's someone here I don't know it's a whole thing um anyway sorry apologies it's written in the 60s so I'm gonna read it very aware that it was written in the 60s and kind of take at face value, what was Betty Frieden, Frieden saying in the 60s versus how do we take and understand that in the modern context? But I'm very excited about it. All right, we've made it through a majority of the situation. I'm proud of us. We're doing a very good job. I'm going to put these down so that I can reach. The, the, and do you want to know how... I'm, <laughs> This is a first world problem to the max. I, I fear even bringing it up because I fear that people will be like, Ariel, get over yourself. But I don't know where to put all of these books. I know that sounds dumb, but I, I live in one bedroom. I live with my parents, which I love. I love living with my parents. It's the best. And I know that if I ask them, could I please buy a new shelf and put it outside of my room? They would let me. But I like having all of my books in my living space. I can look at them and interact with them. And um, if I bought a shelf and put it in another part of the house, I would never see it. I know, because I spend so much time in this room. And um, so anyway, this is where I think of my books being. And I don't have room for another shelf. Um, and all my shelves are full. So that's just a little fun side fact. I understand the privilege of my problem. Okay, um, no, just put that over there. So this final pile, if I can just pull it over here. <laughs> this final pile is books that have been sent to me while, all right, my camera did stop recording, which was unfortunate because I don't know when it stopped recording. Um, ooh, welcome back everybody. I'm just gonna have the microphone up here now. So. This is a pile of books that were sent to me while I was away. You may have already heard that, I'm not too sure. The first book I'm very hyped about, it is The Idiot by Elif Baduman. This looks so good. This is like Pachinko actually, very similarly to Pachinko. This is a book I've considered buying so many times. And again, I couldn't decide if I wanted the UK cover or the US cover and I was very much like hmm you know I'm not gonna read this yet so I can give myself some time to think but then I was reached out to by Vintage um, because this book was nominated for the Women's Prize this year it was shortlisted and um, they were like celebrating the paperback and I was like yes I want a paperback <laughs> and all of the so far both um, covers that I've seen have been in hardcover so I was very excited to get this 
That's great. Then I got this book, A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen. Ooh, this font is very difficult to read. Mirza? I think it's M-I-R-Z-A. Wow. Uh, not beautiful font, but difficult to read. So this um, it was sent to me by Harper? No, Hogarth. And I was excited because Jen Campbell has recently been talking about this book and explaining how much she loves it. And I think she has said that it's her favorite book of the year so far. And if Jen lo liked it, like, how am I not going to like it? This next thing. Oh, so, so exciting. So exciting. Thank you, Penguin. So these are a, f uh, a handful of Penguin's new English library books. I, they gave me The Great Gatsby and I already gave it to my brother because he really, he's recently read The Great Gatsby. He loved it. He read my edition of it though, so he didn't have his own. Um, so I gave him this Great Gatsby and he loved it. Um, but they also sent me Ghost Stories by M.R. James. They sent me To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. This one's beautiful. Actually, you know, I should have my To the Lighthouse. Yeah. Oh, do I own? Yeah, I do own To the Lighthouse. I own To the Lighthouse in this edition. Ooh. That's going to be hard to pick from. I might have to keep both. <laughs> A book I haven't read. Um, I tried to read it. I was supposed to read it for the semester. I tried reading it and I just didn't get into it because I had a lot of reading for another class that I needed to kind of prioritize that week. Hmm. These are both beautiful. A difficult choice. One I don't have to make, thankfully. Um, the Beetle by Richard Marsh. But then most, most excitingly. Oh my God, my friends. 1984 by George Rollo. That's right everybody it's here it's happening it's beautiful it's outstanding I my friend Claire she had gotten this and I was so jealous <laughs> and I was like you know what I, I I shouldn't buy this I already have 1984 I have a great version of it that I really like I don't need another version of 1984 however beautiful this is it's floppy it's got great font it's so clear to read but I don't need it and I was like you're not gonna buy it and then it was sent to me by Penguin and I was over the moon over the moon all right we're right near the end everybody we're so close I was sent the map of us by Jules Preston this is from Harper Impulse which is an imprint of Harper Collins um this is a story gosh I, you know what I don't know it's, again my friend Claire works at Harper and she loved this loves it so much and was so excited to send it to me and I was like yes please send it to me um but it has something to do with a typewriter something to do with an adventure something to do with romance it sounded adorable I was on board um I was then sent oh where do I want to finish this haul I'm gonna finish it here so <laughs> I was sent, I was given I, I interviewed a wonderful person at Faber for my documentary and while I was there oh god that reminds me there's another book I have to show you okay well I'll grab that in a moment um while I was there they gave me these books um some of their new poetry collections so which is always it's always great to get new poetry Zafar Cunyal's Us Hannah Sullivan three poems so this whole collection is three long poems which is cool because I usually read shorter poems so I'm excited to try and dive in. I'm trying to think of the longest poem I've read and the it, Beowulf comes to mind which was interesting I didn't love it but it was interesting Sophie Collins who is Mary Sue and then Richard Scott's Soho so I was gonna finish this haul with my next book but in fact, we're going to take a side quest. All right, everybody come along. Which reminds me, actually, there's another book I could also grab. I'm going to grab this book. Then we're going to shuffle off here. Hello, I'm in another part of my bedroom. To this book that I really want to show you all. Um, while I'm over here, I'm going to quickly scan that I'm not forgetting something else that I'm going to regret. Let me just move these papers along. No, nope, I think I have everything. I think... <laughs> I think I have what we need to finish this book home. All right. 
So, where do I put the microphone? Is it still recording? Yes. Ooh, it's very low on battery. All right. <laughs> so while I was at Faber, they also gave me this. Yes. This is Normal People by Sally Rooney. Sally Rooney also wrote Conversations with Friends, which was very successful. And I'm sure if you looked it up, you would recognize the cover because I remember the cover being all over the place. Um, I have not read Conversations with Friends, however. So a friend of mine at Faber was like, Ariel, she gave me this. And I was like, all right, you know what? I trust Nurekshu. She's great. I love her. I was like, I'll give it a shot. Um, thank you very much. So I accepted the book. And then while I was on the train home, I was like, you know what? I'm going to read. <laughs> Which is something I haven't done. That's a video for another day. I haven't read in a long time. My master's has destroyed my reading in a deep and dark way. But anyway, I haven't read in a while. I'm going to try and read this. I don't know why I picked this one. Of all the books I have, I don't know why I picked this one to read. But I did. And I'm adoring it. I, of course, haven't read more because I'm back to working on my master's. But what I have read, I have absolutely adored. So I'm very excited to continue reading this. And I, I think, from what I've read, that it could be a new favorite book of mine. Which is a shocking thing to say. Alright, this was sent to me by someone at Scepter. This was a while ago. Um, and all of the details are very blurry. It's called Suicide Club... It's about, it says, in near future New York, life expectancy averages 300 years. Immortality is almost within our grasp and it's hell. So, sounds like an interesting kind of a dystopian-y thing. Utopian, perhaps? If people are living so long, I'm not sure. And finally, <laughs> I've made it to the end. This is The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night by my dear friend Jen Campbell. You may have remembered me showing this off last year, but we are now at the paperback release, which is very exciting because I love myself a paperback. Jen Campbell is genuinely one of the most interesting, most clever, most lovely people I have ever met in my entire life. I would like to be like Jen Campbell when I grow up, okay? if I grow up and um, I'm super excited to read this collection. Um, I've read like one story from it and I loved it, but I have not read any more. But I know it's going to be great because Jen Campbell's mind is the mind of a genius. All right, <laughs> we've made it to the end of the book haul. <sighs> I feel a sense of success in having gotten through that many books. I feel a sense of loss in that it's 40 minutes long and it's going to take forever to export on my on my uh computer um as a small life update okay i'm not gonna drag this out too much more as a small life update for the 10 of you who have made it this far in the video okay i am currently in the last three weeks of my masters i'm working on my final project which is a documentary about poets on instagram it's going well, but it's also overwhelmingly difficult and stressful. I know that I'm going to be proud of it when it's done, but right now I'm stressed out of my damn mind. Um, however, how do I say this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a whole video about my masters and stuff. But one thing that I'll say right now is that my masters has really, in a not in a positive way honestly it, it, there is a positive to take from it but the way in which this lesson has been learned has been in a negative way but it has really taught me what i need to be happy and what i want my life to be moving forward and it is not this kind of a life where i'm stressed out of my mind because of what academics think of me and think of my work the people that i want to hang out with the people that I want to make stuff for is you. And I want to share it to a public audience, not to an academic audience that stresses me out to no end. So I'm working really hard to try and pass and finish my masters, but know that I have not forgotten you. <laughs> that sounds dumb, but like, I have not been able to, in the last few months, really juggle doing all of my online stuff with doing my master's. And because my master's is more immediate and is only a year, I've chosen to focus on that.
but that is not indicative of how I want to continue forward. I would like to continue forward with making stuff that excites me with people that actually support me. So all of that to say that on July 27th, when I hand in my documentary, I'm going to have one night of pure, just exhausted sleep. It's going to be emotional and I suspect I will cry. (laughs) And then I'm going to shift gears into living the life I want to live, which is a life where I make stuff for you. And I'm very excited about that. So I'm coming back. I will be here. Exciting things are coming. I have so many fun things planned that I've been so frustrated that I can't work on yet, but I'm so excited to work on them. And um, the most upcoming thing being the book Tubathon, which is happening July 30th to August 5th. Um, And news for that is coming very soon. Thank you for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed this.